it's um, indeed a great pleasure to, uh, to be able to introduce you to the COPD cohort. I'm doing this uh, together with uh, Helene Meyer, who was running the cohort uh, with me from Leuven, but also on behalf of the whole uh, cohort. And I'm presenting you with these two uh, sort of um, unknown soldiers of COPD. They were drawn in the 1970s by Frank Netter, and he was asked to draw patients with emphysema and one with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and we would now uh, qualify both as uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And uh, already in the 70s, when he was making these drawings, he pointed at the loss of mobility because both patients, and this comes from an atlas of all different diseases, but for COPD, he chose to put both these patients in a chair with a, an impressive loss of, uh, of mobility. To briefly introduce you to COPD, um, for these patients, physical inactivity and loss of mobility are really in the picture of these patients. These are the pictures that are always uh, uh, shown when, when COPD is introduced. It affects a huge number of patients. It's the third most important cause of uh, mortality. I'm not particularly proud of that number because I'm working already for 30 years in this field and the problem is still not solved, but uh, um, it is an important disease that, that merits our attention and, and I was super happy that we could, with seven friends, continue to work on physical activity and mobility impairment in these patients and could recruit patients from uh, Athens all the way up to Newcastle and everything in between, uh, all together slightly over um, 600 patients in, in the short time that was allocated to us. And already for many years, physical activity is an important clinical out, uh, endpoint in patients with COPD. And the left figure is a framework that was published in uh, 2021, and it's a result of uh, an international task force together with the COPD Foundation. And so here you see that physical activity um, we defined as a behavior which is influenced by the exercise capacity of a patient and also many other factors. And now mobilized really focused on one of these activities, mainly walking. And mobilized learned us that this is a very important uh, activity for patients. It's meaningful and important for patients. And so mobilized learned us to focus more on, on walking as uh, mobility. But actually, we were already looking for years to walking, because if you look in the COPD literature, most of literature out there is on steps per day, which is walking. But actually, we only looked at the volume of the activity, the amount of steps, and we never looked on how the patients were really walking. So Mobilize really broadened our scope, and we now uh, will go beyond steps per day, but also look to the quality of walking in our patients. Now that the first uh, data become available, we start seeing interesting things, I think, and, and here I'm uh, showing just one of the, of the DMOs uh, out of the 25, uh, the panel of 25 DMOs, uh, looking at uh, the maximum real-life walking speed in these patients, and this is one DMO that perhaps could give us a home assessment of the um, capacity of patients to be able to walk and, and to walk at, uh, at higher speeds or lower speeds, and this may be an interesting endpoint from a clinical trial uh, perspective where you would improve capacity and you don't have to bring these patients then to the lab. The middle uh, figure shows us that um, looking at walking speed in daily life is different from looking at walking speed in the lab. Here you're uh, seeing the four meter gait speed where we asked patients to walk at their usual walking speed, but you can see that in the home situation, even if you would be looking at their maximal walking speed, they're walking much slower than their usual walking speed in the lab. So you really have to measure this in the home situation. And the right uh, panel shows you that there are different um, domains, if you look at, uh, at mobility, the domain of speed is completely different from the domain of volume. For example, you may have patients that do not walk a lot, but they still walk quite fast, and other patients that uh, walk um, uh, many steps per day, but do this at a very slow uh, pace. And beside being a, an important endpoint, physical or mobility can also be uh, or have um, uh, an ability to um, be a prognostic factor. And this is work done by Sarah Buttery uh, during the project. And she showed that at the moment there is evidence on the association between steps per day, so again, volume of activity and mortality, and also simple mobility assessments in the lab now show evidence of an association with mortality. And during Mobilize, hopefully we will see that also other DMOs, well actually Judy, Judy already showed that there is uh, an ability to predict mortality also based on the MOs that are really measured in the home situation of a patient. 
So for us, the next steps are, uh, first of all, to talk on a daily basis uh, with uh, Judith, uh, because uh, there are now data coming uh, day, day after day, so uh, we'll have to digest all that. But then I think it's important to start using the uh, digital mobility outcomes uh, in clinical trials and look at responsiveness if we uh, uh, start with an intervention and see how then um, the DMOs respond to that intervention. We also have to um, use real lab, um, of real life uh, measurements to really capture that concept of, uh, of mobility in full, also in patients with, uh, with COPD. And beyond implementing this in clinical trials, I think it's also important to start using these uh, assessments which, which can be done and are feasible to do also in our clinical practices. I'm really looking forward to the first hospital that implements this in their hospital information system, for example. Then we also have to continue building networks as the one that we've established in um, the uh, Mobilize D consortium and, and already previously in Proactive, continuing to train young researchers and clinicians to use and work with these uh, outcomes in the field of pulmonary rehabilitation, very dear to my heart, but also other personalized interventions for patients with COPD, including pharmacotherapy and the bronchial valve. Um, uh, uh, interventions and, and others, and particularly focus on acute exacerbations, which is really the, the costly uh, element of COPD. If we can help prevent exacerbations, we will definitely reduce cost and increase health-related uh, quality of life. And as the take-home message, we would like to go back to this framework around physical activity, but now focus on interventions. Uh, back in 2021, we um, proposed to, or we, we showed, that you need different interventions if you, for example, want to treat the organs or you want to treat the exercise capacity, so an integrated endpoint, or you want to uh, treat physical activity as a behavior. But now Mobilized showed us that there is more as only looking at physical activity as a behavior. So Mobilize shows us that there are new avenues for treatments where these uh, mobility aspects, so how the patient is walking, are perhaps more related to a capacity of the patient. So these parameters we don't think we can change with behavioral interventions, but new uh, treatments should be done. And in this, we don't only have to look to improve these outcomes, but also um, see a slowdown of the decline as a real success in the patients. And the use of these DMOs will hopefully uh, make it feasible to also do uh, large clinical trials where not all patients need to come for clinical assessments in uh, very often times during the trial. Thank you.